Hello, welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I uh, hope you're all managing to stay safe during lockdown. Uh, we're continuing our schedule of doing two videos a day. Uh, so Mark is going to be back later on tonight with a, I think a classic Sudoku today. He's going to try a New York Times hard puzzle for you guys. Uh, so look out for that. Um, a big thanks for the lovely responses we've had to yesterday's um, celebration video on 150,000 subscribers for the channel. Uh, it's a very emotional video for us um, and uh, yeah it's been absolutely amazing to read all of your comments on it so big thanks. Um, also big thanks of course if you support the channel on Patreon we've put a bit of bonus content up there today as a, an anti-night puzzle by Mike Haldeman. Mike's appeared on the channel I think twice with puzzles in videos and the, the puzzle we put up is a very nice indeed not easy um, so do check that out if you're if you're uh, supporting the channel there. Um, now what am I doing today? You may be wondering looking at this blank Sudoku grid well something a bit different is the answer. Um, Mark has uh, a puzzle that he wants me to try but he says that I have to load the puzzle up during the video um, so that's exactly what I'm going to do in a minute. I do have the rules. What normally happens is that once we've decided which puzzle we're doing I sort of put it into the software and then load it up and I have you know I suppose those few seconds of when I'm putting it into the into the software to think about it. But Mark wants me to have none of that today. I'm literally just going to see the grid for the first time with you guys. So I, I suspect we're going to be looking for something extremely strange. But anyway, let me read the, the rules of this Sudoku, which, by the way, is by Mitchell Lee. Um, now, Mitchell is, of course, a setter uh, for the Galactic Puzzle Hunt. So he is uh, an awfully good uh, puzzle constructor. Now, the, the rules of this puzzle that we're going to try are normal Sudoku rules apply. Any two cells separated by a knight's move or a king's move, as in chess, cannot contain the same digit. Any two orthogonally adjacent cells cannot contain consecutive digits. So there is a, that is quite a big restriction on this grid. So let's just talk a bit about what that means. If we try put a one in the middle, the knight's move constraint says that if this was a chess knight, it could jump to all of these cells, and therefore none of these yellow cells can contain a one. Now, the king's move constraint is going to work by, let's imagine that was a one this time. Now, if this was a chess king, Obviously, you know, the one removes all of these cells from being um, ones just because of normal Sudoku. But if this was a chess king, it could also move to this cell and this cell. So neither of these yellow cells could be a one in this iteration. And finally, what have we got? We've got any two orthogonally adjacent cells cannot contain consecutive digits. Right. So that means that these four cells could not contain a two in this Sudoku. So, um, yeah, so there's an awful lot of restrictions going on. Right, now with that, let me see if I can... Um, how do I do this? I'm going to have to... Let me just see if I can put that in there. Let's see what we get. Right. <laughs> He's got to be joking. There... There's no way that this, well, it might have a unique solution, but it's not going to be findable by a human being. Um, I suspect this is going to be a short video because he is trolling me. And although I can put a one in this box, in the central box. So, Right, I'm going to give this five minutes and then we will probably turn the video off and you'll never see this. And yeah, he's going to get an angry phone call. Um, otherwise, this is going to be a work of sublime genius and it will appear on the channel. So let us, uh, if you want to have a go, <laughs> I suppose I should say that. If you want to have a go, click on the link under the video to play the puzzle. And with that, let's get cracking. Now, why do I think I can put a one in this box? Well, it's because of all these massive constraints on the grid. Those can't be ones by normal Sudoku rules. Those two squares are a king's move from this cell, so they can't be one. These are a knight's move from those squares, so they can't be one. 
And that square is adjacent to a 2, which is consecutive. So that can't be a 1. So the 1 does in fact go there and there, by, because that we can't put a 1 ever next to a 2. So there is a little bit that we can do here. Now let's check this 2. Does it rebound in here? I don't believe it. It does, doesn't it? Because look, these 1s all of a sudden have a potency, because they can't have a 2 next to them. So all of those squares can't be 2. And this 2 sees that one by knight's move. So this is a 2, and that's a 2, because it can't be next to a 1. Right. But this is probably where you can't go any further, because... I mean, there's just no communication in the top or bottom of the grid here. Um, although, having said that, having said that, where do we put the one in that row? Okay, this we may actually have to take this a bit more seriously because this. This one rules out that square by knight's move, that by Sudoku, that square by knight's move. This one rules out that by king's move, that by Sudoku, and that by king's move, and that by knight's move. And this one rules out that one as well. So this square is a one. So there's a one down there. This can't be a one because of the knight's move constraint. And now, now in this row, 2 is restricted as well, because that this 2 sees that one by knight's move, that by king, that by normal. King, knight, normal from this 2. So the 2 is in one of those two positions. So the 2 is in one of these three cells in box 2. 1s have got to be ones have got to be in one of those three cells can we do any better than that we can't quite use the consecutive constraint because it, it you know if i make this a 2 the 1 could escape to there look so we can't quite use that So we're going to have to look. We're going to have to look lower down the grid, and unless I've missed a restriction there, I can't see what to do at the top. I mean, I suppose that one rules out that square, that square, that. Actually, the two is quite restricted even in this square. So the two can not go here, 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 or here. So the two must be in one of those three cells. It's still not good enough. Right. Let's have a look down here. So the You're kidding. Look, the 2. The 2 in row 7. This one rules out that square, that by knight's move. This square could be a 2. This one can't. This one can't because of this one, knight's move. King's move to this one. King's move to this one. Knight's move. I don't believe it. That is a 2. That one's not a 2, therefore. So... Now two, ah, look, two's, this two sees that square by knight's move. So the two must be in one of those two cells. And now where does a two go in one of those three cells? This one rules out both of those. The two must go here. That gives us a two at the top. That, that one can't be two now. I don't believe it. This is... So now we know the 2 is in one of those cells. That can't be a 2. This is a 2. We now can't put the 1 here because it will be next to a 2. Sorry, can't put the 1 there. The 1 shifts here and must be in one of these three squares. And it can't be next to a 2. So it's actually in one of those two squares. You are kidding. Now, 
Yeah, look, this box, where does the one go? This one rules out those squares. The two and the one rule out this square. This two rules out that square. This one is ruled out by the king condition. This one can't be a one, because if it's a one, neither of those squares can be a one. This one by Sudoku, that one by the knight's move. So I think we're just left in this box. We're just left with those two cells to be the one. And that means that's not a one. Oh my goodness. What is going on with this puzzle? don't believe it. The one is restricted to those two squares in this top box because this cell sees that one by the knight's move, sees that one well either by king's move from the one or orthogonally adjacent to the two. This can't be a one. This is the one. You are kidding. So now we get left with this arrangement of ones and twos at the top. Now that's, this arrangement is quite interesting as well. It's sort of symmetrical. But if we try and put the one and the two far apart in either position, in the other row, it will move them together and that's not allowed. So actually we know that the one and the two must be exactly one cell apart wherever they appear. Ah, oh, my goodness. So. Right, but this is probably now going to be impossible because now we've got we've got ones and we've placed some twos, but the threes, which must be where we have to go now, because we know nothing at all about four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine. We know that threes are restricted by twos. That is all we know. So threes, for example, in that box have to go in one of those positions, but in this box they can go just about anywhere. They can't. They can go here. They can't go in one of those two squares because then they'll be orthogonally adjacent to a two. So they can go in five positions in this box. They can go in, and uh, this is just not going to solve. Um, there's too many places. The um, I suppose they can't go in. They can't go ne ever next to a two. So, look. Yeah, I mean, look at this. This is just. And in this box, well, this is this is about ah. This box is about the best box because this two and this two rule out that square and that square, and this one rules out those three squares. So two, sorry, three is restricted there. Now I'm going to color all of those in. Right, so the the sort of the theory is that apparently we can resolve this pattern into threes that are solvable. No way. Well, that one can't be a three. Let's put that. I can see that because the three is in one of those two places. That one can't be a three because if we try a three there. It rules out those two and that one by the knight's move constraint. So actually we can do another digit there. That one can't be a can't be a three. Actually that one can't be a three either. Because if that's a three, look, it has it rules out that one and that one. And then the knight's and the king's move constraint rule out those two as well. So this one isn't a three either. It's actually amazing how much of a restriction this um, or this combination of rules turns out to be, but it's it's still very hard to believe that it's going to be enough to resolve anything here. That square is quite nice. That can't be a three because if that's a three, um, it rules out that one, that one by king's move, and those two by knight's move. So we can get rid of one more. Uh, delete and color. Mm. 
that one also look now that one is that's amazing so this one can't be a three because it rules out this sort of tetris shape from the middle box rules out that one that one those two by knight's move and that one by king's move so this is not possible now now this one is not possible because it sees that one that one and that one by knight's move you have got to be joking now we are getting somewhere aren't we because now we we know the three is in column one in this box. So that is not a three. Now this isn't a three because it would see both of those by knight's move. I don't believe it. This isn't a three now. It sees every one of those three squares. So now this isn't a three by the same logic. It sees all those three squares. And that, now we've got a domino here, so this, this isn't a three. This can't be a three. And, and wherever we put the three, in fact, this, oh, that's very interesting. Whenever, wherever we put a three here, either there or there, those two can't be a three because effectively you can ring a domino it's a bit like a star battle or star it can't touch anything i'm not sure if i'm making myself clear there but let's just imagine this was a three if this is a three you can see it rules out all of those squares immediately by the king's move constraint but it also sees these two by knight's move and that one by sudoku so it rings the entire domino. So actually, wherever the three is here, neither of those can be a three. And oh, this is just staggering. This is absolutely staggering because now, look, we've got, we've locked the three into column eight and column nine in two different blocks. So we now know that in column seven, the three must be in this domino here. And we know that therefore those are not in. And now look, row eight and nine. We've got the threes locked into the same two rows in two different boxes. So this, neither of those can be a three. The three, we, we've we got a three and we're gonna get another three and another, th and another, th I don't believe this. The threes are placeable from that absolute gibberish we had in the grid. What this is, this is magic. This we are watching magic unfold here. Oh, now look, this three, this three is next. It can't be next to a two. The two must move here. Therefore, that's the one, this is the one, and this is the two, and we've disambiguated all of this as well. Oh my goodness. So now we move on to fours, presumably. We've done all the ones, all the twos, all the threes. You, you could not believe it. Now, It's possible the fours are going to be easier, you know, because there's less space in the grid now. Fours are already quite restricted. In fact, in this box, the four must be in one of those two cells. This is going to solve, isn't it? This is going to solve. I am pretty dumbfounded, I have to say. That is... If this... If this solves, I'm not sure I've got the adjectives to describe what is going on here. This is like, this is like the universe is singing to us here. This is just absolutely unbelievable. Fours. Right, so the fours here rule out that one. 
We've got a domino here. We know what we do with dominoes. They cannot have fours anywhere near them. That place is a four. Place is a four. Place is a four. Place is a four. These, those two are both ruled out. That one by the king's move. Place that four. Place this four. Four here. <laughs> it's just absolutely unbelievable. The fours, the fours were easy. Let's get rid of the colouring and move on. So fives now. So already, yeah, the fives are restricted. They are very restricted. It can't be next to a four. That, that, whoa, whoa, look at this. We're going to be able to place a five in this cell immediately. And here, that's the only place a five can go in the block. Two, three, fives. We almost don't need colouring here. I'm going to keep going with it. Um, oh, that one is much worse there. Look, that can go in a lot of places. And there. Okay, so where do these fives resolve? Well, this one obviously must be a five. That must be a five, therefore. That resolves everything there. This five sees those two. That one. This one. That one. That one and that one. And we're done with fives as well. <laughs> I have to say this this is something extremely special um, now can we keep this going so sixes must be in one of those two sixes ah six in this box must be here because the five sees both of those and that five sees that square so now the six must be in one of those two cells both look possible at the moment this five sees those two, so we can place the six. Ah, that one, that five sees that square. The six is placeable in that's in the center. This six sees that by knight's move, so that six must be true. That's the only place a six can go in the bottom cell. Six must go here. That resolves the six at the top. Six must be in this square. And what do we say? Ah, those, that must be a six, that must be a six, and therefore this must be a six. <sighs> so now, presumably, yeah, sevens, look, we can just write the seven in, because the six, and this, this six and this six rule, rule out both of those squares. So the seven must go here. Place, this must be a seven. We mustn't put a seven next to a six. That must be a seven. This seven by knight's move sees that one, sees that one. That's a seven. That's a seven. That's a seven. This is a seven. Must avoid, avoid the king's move constraint. Seven down here, look, must be in this square, which means that's a seven. And if I think we've done the sevens. And the eights, eights and nines are just going to resolve. All we've got to find is a seven that's orthogonally connected to something. Uh, or where there's a gap next to a seven, this seven. Look, this square here now cannot be the eight, so that's going to completely trip the whole puzzle, isn't it? We are watching something extremely special here. This Mitchell Lee has come up with a work of sublime genius. That's got to be the eight. That's got to be the nine. Yes. Wow. Oh my goodness me. Now, let's just take a stare at this because that there must be something going on in this grid. We've got the central cell is a nine. So I'm just wondering if we've got symmetry here. Let's click all the nines and highlight them and then have a look. So have we got... Yes, we have rotational symmetry. So the eights and the ones are are always reflecting onto each other. Look at that. So wherever an eight appears, if you rotate the grid through 180 degrees, you always find a one. Look at that. Absolutely mesmerizing. Oops, I misclicked there, but you can see this one eight here reflect up there onto that one eight at the top. The seven is reflecting onto a two always. The three is reflecting onto a six. The fours and fives are reflecting onto each other as well. Oh my goodness me. Well, that 
that grid is something that you should just take a photo of and preserve to, for posterity. That is an unforgettable puzzle. Unforgettable. Um, actually, thank you, Mitchell. Unbelievable. Thank you, Mark, as well. Um, you, yeah, I very nearly clicked stop on the video, actually, um, and, and rang you to berate you. But um, no, that was that was something special. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments. Uh, I don't know what to say. Absolutely amazing.